We're all at speed. Yeah. <laughs> Your famous name. Yeah. No, he's not. He's not. He's, he's out of his box, aren't you? He's done all this sort of stuff before. <laughs> <laughs> he got it somewhere. Yeah. Bye, Matt. So we're rolling on sound. I'm rolling on this one. Right. I've got all the sound here. Right. Let's go back to the beginning and tell me a little bit about why you decided to adopt. Well, um, we'd been together a long time. We got married. Um, we'd actually been together about 10 years before we decided to get married. Longer than that, but anyway. Um, <laughs> when, when, when we eventually went to the doctors, we were told that it, it would be difficult for us to conceive naturally. Um, but I think we had, we'd spoken about adoption. We spoke about adoption actually before, yeah. before we got married. It was my idea, I think. That's which, true. <laughs> which is something that I've thought about since I was 11. I had a very secure upbringing and felt that I wanted to pass it on, I suppose. We wanted to adopt um, after our own children had got older because we felt that we hadn't finished parenting and we wanted to be able to offer um, a home to children that maybe couldn't be uh, brought up in their own natural birth family. <sighs> How does it make me feel? It makes me feel complete. Felt as if I was sort of lost and I needed something and that something was children. I'm adopting with my partner Paul um, and we are uh, fairly new into the process really. We've had uh, our social worker come around to our house a few times so to kind of get the ball rolling um, and yeah it's really enjoyable so far. We went through the whole process which we found um, all emotions complete mixture of emotions, um, sad, happy, um, stressful, you know, a lot of questions about our relationship, uh, looking at our house, health and safety through the house, um, there's all sorts. You talk through your life and you do have to go to places and you do have to talk about things that are emotional and things that are difficult. But it's, it's necessary, I think, in order for them to... It becomes apparent, I think, why they're asking the difficult questions that they ask. When you come near the end of assessment, the social workers, they know when it's time to go to panel. It was all, you know, very official. And then they came out, asked us to go back in, and they said, congratulations, you've been approved. And that... Oh, sorry. You're not supposed to get upset. I <laughs> think I cried and hugged the social work. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, an amazing feeling when, when mm -hmm. you come out and said, uh, yeah, unanimous. Yeah, you're approved <laughs> to adopt. <laughs> <laughs> the expectation then is for everything to go quiet and it could be a week, a month, a year, two years. Well, the right match is found. At the moment, we are just waiting for the match. So, We've agreed with our social worker that she will phone us on a monthly basis. You have to specify the type of child or child, children that you uh, would like or consider that you are right to adopt and obviously they make the same sort of analysis of you as to who you'll be um, the right parent for. Um, and that can be the number of children you adopt in, in one go, so sibling groups are quite common, um, ethnicity, age, <laughs> when we came to it, we, they asked us, and how many would you like? And I said, oh, it's got to be two. And Andrew went, are you sure? I said, yeah. Uh, we wanted as, as young a child as, as possible. And uh, we obviously would have preferred to have a mixed race child. We, we waited for two weeks and we got a phone call from the social worker. Would you be interested in taking on three little girls? I said, three? He said, yeah. I said, uh, I would. You think, oh, it's never going to happen. And then suddenly, one day, you just get this phone call and you can't quite believe it, to be honest, you really can't. Um, and then you have to go away and read all the information, obviously, um, to see if you think that you are the right match for the child. Very quickly after being approved, uh, we were told about our son, who at that, a, at that time was about um, 13 weeks old. Well, when we got him, he was 13 mm. weeks old. Um, and he, he was actually mixed race, and um, he, he he fitted all our all our 
Well, he was just what we wanted, wasn't he? I saw the picture and fell in love. We discussed um, adopting a child with a disability because that was my background. And the call came one day, it was in the afternoon. The little boy had come forward um, who had been relinquished by his birth parents because he had Down syndrome. And he was just, at that time, um, 10 weeks old. The next thing is to plan the sort of the initial meetings, if you like, with the children. You have to do a book, don't you? Yeah. I don't. Take, take photographs of your house, your cars, your, the bedrooms, your bedrooms. This is where you're going to sleep, your garden, yeah. where you're going to play. Just so they've got something to look at to prepare them for that big step, because for them it's obviously it's a huge, uh, a huge thing, and the, they're uh, only little. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that sticks in my mind is is when we went to uh, visit the child. Uh, we knocked on the door, the foster foster carer's house, and we heard him running about. And then the door opened, and all we heard is he come running up and saying, uh, "Mummy and Daddy," and uh, that was the <laughs> that was the first uh, you know amazing feeling mm. that uh, you know mm. someone was calling. It's kind calling of what he's been waiting for forever, isn't it? Yeah, mm. and uh, it was it was like on cloud nine. It was the the best feeling in the world. Yeah, it was a beautiful uh, moment. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> we walked into the living room and her giggles and looked around and behind the sofa there's two little girls hiding behind the sofa in hysterics and they wanted to see us before we saw them and uh, you know that, at that point they started calling us mummy and daddy. I had to go and blow my nose because it was just so much to take in that these two precious little things were just wonderful. As soon as, as, soon as we, we, we saw him and we walked in the house, it was love at first sight, wasn't yeah. it? You know, yeah. Cheeky little chappy. And, yeah. Uh, I can remember the first time we met him, when he came in, could he, when he came into that room. Can you remember that? Yeah, and he was I, just I smiling, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. God. That was fantastic. And, you know, when you... When you um, when this baby is now going to be yours, it's not someone else's baby. And we first met him, they put him in my arms and I remember looking down and he had this big smile on his face and I was sort of overwhelmed thinking, why is he smiling at me like that, you know? <laughs> it, it's the strangest of feelings to, to have a baby placed into your arms that um, you haven't given birth to, but to have those same feelings um, of warmth and protectiveness and nurturing. But it's amazing, it just felt like he was my own son. I just looked at him and I thought, you'll never ever have to worry again. Because we'll care for you now forever. And that for me is just what it's all about. It's about being able to give these children a forever family that's going to be there. And it's not always a smooth journey and it's not always easy. But you get there and you know those children are going to be with you and they are, know that you're going to be with them. There's a lot of support yeah, there. Yeah, there, there, there was a lot of support. Yeah. yeah. And it's, not, it's not intrusive support either. You know, if, if you want help, yeah. it was there. It yeah. wasn't like they were always on your doorstep saying, do this, do that. It was, uh, no. it was when you wanted it, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, they do like um, regular reviews. And apart from the reviews, you can ring if you needed to about anything, if you, even if it was just for advice on something. Yeah. We were given the opportunity to meet the birth parents, it was a choice that we had and... Um, we decided to, ask, to, we, we, yeah. to meet them. I didn't particularly want to do it, but then when I sat down and thought about it, I thought, this is going to help me later on when it does come to the time where she's going to ask me questions. What we agreed to do was to keep in touch, um, the, not, not in any not other way. Not with them, through just, a letterbox scheme, once a year, uh, a letter. Send a letter each year, give them an update on, on uh, how they're progressing, etc. I got loads and loads of information and now I'll be able to, in time, let my little girl know all those things and hopefully that'll make her feel more secure. If you're thinking of adopting, I think it'd be a good idea to go on the, on the one-week course because that's really informative. It oh, does give you a good yeah. taste of, uh, of, of this new sort of world which you know nothing about, really. The, the good thing about it, it taught you about parenting generally. And, you know, the importance of, of heritage in their back, their genetic and bi bi biological background, their birth family, how it is important to, 
to still, you know, not just try and forget that, wipe it out, how it is important for, for, the, for the child as you bring them up and mm. everything. So it was really useful, I, I, I thought. The training group um, explains why children are in care. Yeah. And a lot of people may think children are quite often relinquished, but there's a lot of, most children aren't relinquished. They're taken from parents because, oh. you know, of one reason or another and backgrounds. It told us that about the entire process, um, everything about attachment disorders and other difficulties a child might have. Uh, but the key thing for me was meeting other adopters and foster carers. Um, and actually at the end of the course, actually seeing some cards of real life children that needed adoption, because that kind of brought it all together really. I brought it home and it was quite, um, quite emotional to see the, the, these children that needed ado adopting, yeah. To, to, to give someone a, a second chance in life. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an it's amazing feeling, yeah. you know, knowing that uh, you've, you've, you've helped them and, and making a better life. Mm. And seeing the change in yeah. the little boy that we first met, yeah. um, who, you know, couldn't speak. He was at speaking age, but he was unable to speak at the time. And, but now yeah. it's hard to actually get him to stop yeah. speaking. Yeah. He's, like, he's, saying he's going come on, on 17, yeah. isn't he, at the minute? Yeah. <laughs> so to know we've given him that chance in life that he didn't have before, yeah. it's just amazing. And, when he first came to us, he didn't really have any strong emotions. He just used to put his arms on you rather than hug you. But now he really hugs you tight till he shakes. And that's really fantastic and it makes you feel really good, really good. He says, I love you, Daddy. He does, I love you, Daddy. <laughs> the other day he said to me, um, thank you for being my mummy. And if I had a different mummy who didn't do the things you do, I would want you. <laughs> <laughs> It has been the best thing we've ever done. Absolutely. Really. Um, they are fantastic and annoying <laughs> and loud. and Very loud. Um, just wonderful. Every day is different and it's just been a really exciting two years that they've lived with us and a really difficult and interesting four-year journey from when we first decided we were going to adopt. I would just urge people that are considering adoption to find the information out and see if it's right for their family but not to be put off by you know what they think is red tape because it's all done for a reason and what's best for the child is an assessment of adopters. I would say to anybody thinking about adopting is stick your toe in the water because you just don't know. I didn't think for one minute that they would, would allow a single mum with two children running a business to adopt but they did. And he's 19 now. Oh, you've, you've got to do it. It's so worth it. Yeah. And we do it again. And yeah. we recommend to other people to do it again. Yeah. And again and again. <laughs> mm.